Bible is a book of covenants and God is relational and he wants to have relationship with us he's so serious about that relationship with you and me that he establishes it as a covenant meaning this is a solemn oath because God is very serious about relationship and he keeps this covenant for a thousand generations meaning look this is a covenant that he's going to keep it he's going to stand by this through time greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to living strong today as always it's our privilege our joy and delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God. 
Over the last several weeks, we've been talking about covenant, and we're trying to understand the meaning of covenant and what it means to be in a covenant relationship with God and how we go about living as covenant people. And we're trying to work towards that and, and, and trying to understand what, how does being in covenant with God uh, make a difference in our everyday lives. And as we build our understanding of covenant, on the program today, I want to talk about a very important aspect of covenant and about, especially about the blood covenant. You see, the covenant can be made in many different ways. Uh, a covenant could be made uh, a very simply by two people just having a conversation and committing to doing something. But we understand and we realize, especially in our world today, that those, co those kinds of covenants are very cheap, if you will, meaning a person could say something, commit to doing something today, and then not even worry about it the next day. They could forget about it. They could just completely ignore what they stated yesterday, or they could even deny and go back on what they stated uh, earlier. Uh, so that kind of a covenant, a covenant made by pure words, uh, are, are very frivolous at times, are very weak at times, because we don't understand the seriousness of, of our words. We don't take them very seriously. Of course, there could be other covenants, covenants made by the signing of documents. Uh, they could be covenants made by the exchanging of gifts. You know, I give you something, I take something from you, and these become tokens of a agreement or a, a commitment that is being made and so on and so forth. But the highest form of covenant making that we see in Scripture is that of the blood covenant. The blood covenant is extremely important. It is the most important kind of covenant that could be made. And so what we want to understand is what is a blood covenant? Why is there the shedding of blood? And what is the significance of it uh, and the seriousness of the blood covenant? Now, in the Old Testament, the word for covenant, the Hebrew word for covenant is brit, which literally means to cut a covenant. So that word by itself carries with it the idea of cutting, of blood, bloodshed, and of setting in place a covenant. So when the Hebrews used the word covenant or used the word brit, they had the idea of a cut that was made which caused the shedding of blood and which then resulted in the setting up of a covenant, a blood covenant. That was the most powerful uh, kind of covenant. Now, why is blood so important? Blood represents life. Uh, we see in Old Testament scripture in Leviticus 17 and verse 11, the Bible says, the life of the person, the life of the being is in the blood. So when blood is shed, it indicates that a life is being given. So a blood covenant really is a covenant of life for life. That means two people are entering into a blood covenant. They are stating that I'm going to give my entire life for this covenant. I am making my whole entire being, my whole self, I'm putting my whole self on the line for this covenant. Any violation of this covenant will cost me my life. And I'm backing this covenant up with my entire life. So that's the significance of blood. That means the blood being used to ratify, to, to bring into effect a covenant means that this covenant is based on life. Life will be, is being given, life is going to back this covenant up, and any violation of this covenant will result in life being taken. The life of the violator is at risk if this covenant is violated. So let's look at, careful, let's look at the blood covenant that God made with Abraham. In Genesis 15, uh, Genesis 12, God calls Abraham, so Abraham obeys God, and he, he follows God to go to a land that God promised to give him. 
And then Genesis, the 15th chapter, is where we see God setting up this blood covenant with Abraham. He tells Abraham, you bring this animal, uh, you cut it into half, and God himself passes through the two pieces of the animal and, and, uh, and things that were sacrificed. God himself passes through, and so he sets up a blood covenant with Abraham. It was very different from the kind of covenant that God made with Noah, for instance, where there was no shedding of blood there. It was just a promise that was made, and the rainbow was given as a sign. But this covenant of Abraham was a much more solemn covenant because it was a blood covenant, and God himself passed through the, the cut pieces of the animal where the blood was shed. God is saying, I'm giving Abraham, I'm giving all of my life, all of my, myself to you, in this covenant. It's a very solemn, very serious covenant, a blood covenant. But that also meant, as Abraham entered into this blood covenant, it meant that Abraham would also be required to give all of himself to God in this covenant. He would have to walk before God, completely devoted to God as part of this covenant. Now, what are some of the things we see in this blood covenant that God set up with Abraham? We see that subsequently, God tells Abraham, and I'm, I'm referring to Genesis, the 17th chapter, that God says, Abraham, this covenant that I have with you, I will establish with your descendants after you in their generations. Meaning this covenant I have with you is going to continue on. But here are some things I want you to do. First, I want you to have a sign or a seal or a token of this covenant in your flesh. So all the male well, on, on the eighth day, they must be circumcised as a sign of them being in this blood covenant with, with God Almighty. So God said, this is the sign of my covenant. It's something you do perpetually, generation after generation, generation after generation. They continue doing this. It's a token to them. It's a remembrance to them that they are in a blood covenant with God Almighty. Now, if, they, if anyone does not keep that covenant, then he violates it. He's no longer under the blessings of that covenant. He needs to keep the token. He needs to keep the sign of this covenant. The other thing that happens is that God changes their names. Now, in the Old Testament, a change of name is very significant. Names were descriptive of nature. So when God said, Abraham, because you're in covenant with me, I'm changing your name. I'm changing your name from Abraham. To Abraham, from being an exalted father, I'm making you the father of a multitude. I'm changing the name of your wife, Sarai, to Sarah. From being a, 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 a princely, I'm changing her to being a mother of princes. So God changes their name, in effect saying, I'm changing who you are. I'm changing your identity. I'm changing your nature. I'm bringing you into a place of royalty. I'm making you the father of a multitude. I'm making Sarah a mother of princess. So that's another thing that happens. When we enter into a covenant with God, God gives us a token or a sign or a seal of, of his blood covenant, something that we continue to practice as a remembrance of that covenant. He also moves us into a place of royalty, gives us a new identity. He changes our very nature, who we are, because we become covenant people. Once we were strangers, now we are people of covenant with God. And so this is what happened when God established his blood covenant with Abraham. But you know, as Abraham journeyed with God, God actually put Abraham to the test. So Abraham received Isaac as the, the child or the son of promise. But there came a day and a time when God said, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son Isaac, and I want you to take him and offer him as a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. Basically, God was saying, Abraham, will you give, your, give up your all as a person who is in covenant with me? So remember, a blood covenant is life for life. God says, I give all of myself to you, but I also want all of you given to me. And here was a test. Abraham, will you take Isaac? You know, can you, in our mind's eye, if we try to imagine, if we try to visualize how much Isaac meant to Abraham, probably the world, just meant everything to Abraham. And God is saying, take that, take Isaac and offer him. You know, sometimes as we walk with God and as part of that blood covenant that we have with God, 
God may ask us. God may challenge us. Do you really give all of you to me? Is that this a covenant really uh, so important to you that you're willing to give all of you to me? Now, Abraham obeyed God. He did exactly that. He was willing to offer up Isaac. And God said, okay, Abraham, it was only a test. Don't kill the boy. But I wanted to test you. I wanted to know what was in your heart. And because you have obeyed, because you have done this, so I will bless you. And he says, by myself, I have sworn that I will bless you and I will fulfill my promise to you. So here we, here we see that as, even as Abraham gave everything up, God says, I am swearing by myself. That means all of me is going to back up this covenant that I'm going to fulfill it for you and for the descendants after you in their generation. Very quickly, I want to just talk about the, uh, the blood covenant that God made with Moses and Israel. And here again, we know that God gave the Ten Commandments as part of the covenant, which declared the terms of the covenant, what he wanted his people to obey, the instructions that he gave them. But also as part of that covenant, he gave them sacrifices for them to practice as part of that covenant. Now they came with these sacrifices and these sacrifices were putting them in remembrance that they were people in covenant with God. And so they, throughout their generations, they kept their sacrifices, they kept their feasts, which were memorials, which were reminders that they were covenant people with God. And you know, that covenant simply meant that God, Jehovah God, had made all of himself available to his people. And we see under this covenant, the Old, or the old Testament, under the Old Covenant, that people invoked the blessings of this covenant. That they were able, when they did one of those sacrifices, when they made those sacrifices, or when they... Uh, celebrated something God told them to celebrate, and they remembered the covenant, it actually invoked the blessings, it invoked the power of that covenant in them, in, among them as a community or as an individual. When David went to fight Goliath, he went as a man of covenant. And the reason he, he could stand boldly against Goliath was simply because he remembered the sign, the token of the covenant. He said, I am a man in covenant with God. I have the sign, the seal, the token of that covenant in my flesh. And he went out based on that. And so you see that uh, uh, even as a community, as a nation, uh, as they participated in the, practice, in the sacrifices, as they participated in the feasts, as they remembered the seal or the token of the covenant that God had given to them, they walked in the blessings, in the power, in, the, in, in what God had made him available to them through that covenant. Now, the last, the most important blood covenant that we see, of course, is the blood covenant with the new creation that God has set up with us as new covenant believers. The, the, the covenant that we have as believers with God Almighty is a blood covenant. It's a covenant that is established by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 26 and verse 28, He said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. So His blood was what brought in this new covenant. Now, I just want to bring to our attention here that when He instituted the Lord's table and He said, You eat this bread and drink this cup, He gave that to us as a sign and as a token of the new covenant. So every time we partake of that new covenant of the Lord's table, we are invoking that covenant. It's just like David running against Goliath. He invoked that covenant based on the seal or the sign or the token of that covenant. For the new covenant that we have, the bread and the cup is us invoking this new covenant that we have in God. We are taking part in the sign, the seal, of the token of the covenant. We are remembering and we are putting God in remembrance of the covenant we have with Almighty God, which He made available to us. And it's a powerful moment because at that moment when you are participating in the token of that covenant, it's the time when you say, I'm invoking this blessing of that covenant. 
Just like David said, I'm going against this Philistine. I want victory over the enemy. That was what he wanted at that time. When you are partaking of the Lord's table, you're invoking the power of the blood covenant. And you can draw, you can receive, whether it's healing, whether it's God's provision, whether it's God's deliverance in a situation, whatever it is, you can at that moment of participating in the Lord's table, when you are invoking the, the covenant of God, uh, the blood covenant that you have with God, you can receive, intentionally draw out of that covenant that you have with God. And when we offer up spiritual sacrifices, whether it's a worship, of praise, of financial giving, whatever we do, when we give, when we offer these sacrifices, we are once again putting God in remembrance of our covenant with Him. Just as God instructed His people in the old covenant, uh, in the covenant that He established with Moses, for them to keep doing the sacrifices, for them to keep celebrating the feasts, they were putting God in remembrance of His covenant. And you and I offer up spiritual sacrifices, whether it's worship, whether it's prayer and intercession, whether it's our giving to God, we are invoking that blood covenant that we have. Remember, a blood covenant means it's life for life. All that God is, He makes available to us. And all that we are, He says, belongs to Him. And as we walk in that manner and we invoke the, 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 the power of that covenant through the tokens and the sacrifices, God releases, God is faithful to release His blessings upon our lives. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Before we close the program today, I'd like to take a moment to pray with us together. You know, the blood covenant is so powerful. You as a believer, you are in a blood covenant with God through your faith in Jesus Christ. And it means that God has made all that He is available to you. And I want to pray with you. You know, what is it that you need right now in your life? Maybe there is a financial challenge that you want God's provision for. Maybe there's a situation that holds you trapped and you want God's deliverance there. Maybe it's healing that you want God to bring into your body. Whatever it is, it's available to you through the blood covenant that God has with you through His Son, Jesus Christ. And as I pray, I want you to extend your faith. And like what David did when he went against Goliath, I want you to say, God, this is mine. I want to receive it right now because of the covenant I have with you. And I want you to expect a deliverance to take place in your life. I want you to expect the healing to take place. And I believe it will right now as we pray. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the blood covenant that's been established for us through Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray for every person watching. I pray for miracles in their lives. I pray for deliverances to be released. I pray for healings to take place. I pray, I pray and I declare every work of the enemy broken of their lives. I release the power of God that destroys every yoke and removes every burden. I command healing for every sickness and disease and infirmity and ailment. I command the miracle power of God to flow into their bodies and make them whole. And God, I release your divine provision for their needs and their financial needs. And God, I pray that you will move powerfully in their circumstances to bless them with your shalom, your total well-being. And Father, I do this because we are in a covenant with you and we invoke the power of that covenant and we receive the blessings of that covenant in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And if your life has been touched through what you heard, through what you received during our time of prayer, we'd really love to hear from you. Could you please take a moment to send us an email? Let us know what God has done in your life as you watch this telecast today. We look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders and also in church planting in areas across this land feel free to do as the lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across india